Hey, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is the top 13 action figures of 2013. So why the top 13 action figures of 2013 in 2019? Well, um, because I'm still trying to come up with interesting episodes for you guys to watch. And uh, I've been blogging about toys a lot longer than I've been doing these YouTube videos. And I started blogging uh, right around the end of 2011. And on my blog every year, I always write a, uh, a, top, a top 10 list of the top 10 toys I got that year. Um, except it's always so hard for me to pick 10. So when I started in 2012, I did the top 12 toys of 2012. And then I did top 13 of 2013 and top 14, 15, 16, and so on. So for 2013, I listed the top 13 action figures that were released that year and that I got. So uh, they weren't just the top 13 action figures released that year because I didn't get a whole lot of the action figures that were released that year. And it wasn't just the top 13 action figures I purchased that year because some of the toys I purchased that year were released, you know, the year before, two years before, whatever. So those are my two rules. It had to be a toy I got that year and a toy that was released that year. So uh, I recently did a video of my top 12 of 2012, and uh, that was kind of fun to go back and revisit those toys and think, like, do they do they still hold up? If I were to do this list again, would those toys still make the list? And so, yeah, I'm going to do all of my lists from all the past years, and today we're going to take a look at the uh, 2013 list. So um, hope you enjoy. Let's take a look at the first figure. So in the number 13 spot, I have Cobra Mortal. And this is a G.I. Joe figure that was produced by the G.I. Joe Collectors Club for their convention box set that year. So let's take a closer look at him here. So who is Cobra Mortal? Because you kind of have to be somewhat hardcore G.I. Joe fan to know who this guy is. So... When I kind of got back into Joe collecting around the early 2000s, um, that was kind of my first time experiencing the internet while collecting, and I was able to find out about all these crazy G.I. Joe figures and figures from toy lines that I didn't know existed over overseas and all that sort of stuff. And it was really fun to kind of learn about all these uh, international variations of the figures. So I have this handy book here by uh, Ron Connor and Derek Anderson, which is a guide to uh, all the international G.I. Joe variations. So like on the cover there, you see Cobra Diaco, who is a Brazilian repaint of uh, Snake Eyes' head on Flash's body. There you see, uh, this is Glenda. She was a repainted Scarlet with blonde hair and uh, blue outfit. So this book is broken up into different countries. So here you see Argentina. And so in Argentina, there was a figure released called uh, Cobra Mortal. And he was a Snake Eyes figure with uh, a combination of chrome silver and uh, red plastic parts. Kind of bizarre looking, but he's become highly sought after. If you can find this actual Argentinian figure, um, yeah, highly desirable. So because not many collectors can get their hands on any of these figures, the Collectors Club has done a really uh, good job of recreating these figures um, for collectors to pick up. And so they redid this chrome and red version of Cobra Mortal for one of their box sets uh, a couple of years prior to 2013. Um, and it was pretty much an exact replica of this. It was done in the old, what we call the O-ring style, where they have that little elastic that holds these kind of 80s era figures together. So uh, I had kind of stopped buying vintage style figures, but I was all in on these modern era type of figures by the time uh, 2013 was going. These figures started off in 2007, and I was pretty much buying all of them. And I was really hoping that they would give us a new version of Cobra Mortal, because I really like that bizarre red and chrome look. And uh, they never did give us that version of Cobra Mortal in uh, the modern style, but I'm almost... Uh, happier that they gave us this version so even at the time of that book that i just showed you was public was uh, published this figure still wasn't known there was another variation of cobra mortal which was a chrome uh snake eyes head on a cobra commander body so it had more of like a a suit 
type body uh, rather than like a commando outfit or a military outfit. And uh, I don't know all the origins of that toy. It's very rare. Um, and uh, when it was discovered, the club decided to recreate that for this version of Cobra Mortal. So it's, uh, you know, it suffers a little bit from using some older parts. Like, for example, this Co these Cobra Commander legs. Um, they're from very early on in the modern era. And so he's come, comes across a little lanky. Um, and his, like, his torso, his arms are a little skinny. But uh, I can't help but love this figure. I love these weird uh, foreign repaints um, getting repurposed in the modern era. And now becoming like real characters that we can integrate into our G.I. Joe collecting. Now, in wondering whether this figure would still make my list of top uh, action figures of 2013 if I were to make the list today, I would say absolutely, and he would probably be higher up than 2013, because I've really kind of come to appreciate this figure even more in the years since its release. I just think it's a really, uh, like, attention-grabbing looking piece on the shelf with that stark white and the silver head. Yeah, I just think he's awesome. So definitely a great action figure release that year. So in the number 12 spot, I've got Metalhead from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So this is a character that was included in the vintage line. And this new line of Ninja Turtle figures had just kicked off uh, the year before. If you watched my 2012 list, I had put Leonardo on there because uh, the first figures that were released from this new series were the four turtles. And I thought they were all fantastic. I really loved the look of them. And then this Metalhead figure was coming out, and I was really stoked to get it too. I thought it looked really cool, and I liked it a lot more than the vintage Metalhead. Um, this guy's a lot blockier looking. He's more more robot than turtle, I would say, whereas the other version looked kind of like a, a metal turtle, and not so much like a robot. Um, he had a lot of chrome on him, which would... This figure probably could have benefited from some chrome. But uh, I was excited to get this figure, and I do think he looks great. But this was from very early on in that turtle line, and they'd already started taking away the articulation. Like, uh, so his knees still bend. Um, this arm doesn't move at all because it has this weird action feature where you launch this, you flick this missile at the back and shoots the fireball out or whatever. Um, this arm doesn't bend either, though he's got a, he spins at the wrist. Uh, and I don't think there's any swivel or anything in his waist. So... Compared to the first wave of figures, it was disappointing to see how these things were getting uh, kind of cheaper as they went. And by the following year, I thought the figures were pretty much terrible and I stopped buying them. So, would this figure still make the list if I were to do this again today? Hmm, probably not. Uh, I'll be honest, when I make these lists, I was trying to get a little bit of diversity in there as well. So not to say I didn't love this figure. But there was probably another G.I. Joe I could have put on this list that I liked more than it, but uh, I just didn't want my list to be completely G.I. Joe-centric. So I did my best to kind of include other lines when there was a figure that I really liked. And while I do like this figure, it's a little too basic, I think, for a best-of list. But still pretty cool for 10 bucks. Now, in the number 11 spot, I've got Devastator. But not a typical Devastator action figure. This is a Lego style Devastator. So Hasbro had their own uh, in-house Lego knockoff brand called Creo. And for a couple of years there, they were really supporting the line and they were doing G.I. Joe as well as Transformer Creo. Um, plus some of the other lines as well, I think, but I wasn't really paying attention to those. But I was all in on the G.I. Joe and Transformer Creo line. Um, it was just a lot of fun. They were little uh, little brick figures, like the same as Lego men, very compatible with Lego. Like you can snap Creo, uh, attach it to Lego parts. And uh, yeah, they were just little, you know, like one inch figures or however tall those Lego figures are. And they were really cool. The G.I. Joe ones especially were just super cute. And then I could have put any of those Transform or G.I. Joe Creos on there. I actually preferred the G.I. Joe ones. But this gimmick was just, too cool not to give a little nod on the list. So I'm not going to take them all apart right now, but you can see here, each of these components is another figure. Um, so like Devastator in the Transformers uh, cartoons and comic books, he's a combiner. So there's six Transformers that merge together to create 
this big robot. And so where an average Creo figure would only have been about this tall, you bought the different figures and you snapped them together to create this combiner. So he's quite a bit taller than the other Creos in your collection. And uh, the fact that they could take a little Lego man, actually transform it into a vehicle and then still make it combine into a big robot. It's just uh, very innovative. And you can kind of tell from some of the parts here on the different type of vehicles that he was, like you see here, the kind of the scoop on, uh, I don't know, what is that kind of vehicle called? A, a scooper? I don't know. Um, but he was also, uh, I think, a dump truck and a bulldozer. I can't quite remember because I've had him in devastator mode for a long, long time. So would this figure still make my list now? Again, it's hard to say. It's hard to say that this little brick figure, which is so simple, is better than some of the really nicely sculpted and really expensive uh, like G.I. Joe's and Masters of the Universe figures I was getting at the time. But as far as uh, I was really excited about these at the time, I thought they were a whole lot of fun to play with. And uh, fun is a factor that sometimes gets left out of these toys. Sometimes they're so delicate, you put them on the shelf and you never touch them again. These guys were, uh, it was really fun to take them out of the package, snap them together, um, you know, play with them. Like some of them came with, uh, the G.I. Joe ones came with these sets so you could build the the boats and the tanks and the jeeps and the bases and yeah it was a whole lot of fun so yeah i think this figure probably would still make my list somewhere so in the number 10 spot i've got another cute little figure so this is i believe you pronounce his name aljaro but uh, i just called him a uh, saga armadillo so if you listened or watched the video for my 2012 list uh, i had one of these figures on there as well and this will be the last one you see on my list because the line really only lasted about a year and a half and then it fizzled out completely. So it was a line put out by Takara in Japan and it never made it to North America, which is why the characters only have Japanese names. So Aljaro is his uh, Japanese name. And so it was all these little animals in uh, suits of armor. And uh, I just loved them all. I could put any single one of these on the list. And if they kept making these, I'd probably have one on my list every single year because I think they're great. Because one of my favorite toy lines from when I was a kid was the Battle Beasts. And so here's a Battle Beast armadillo from the 80s. Absolutely loved these figures. And I loved the little gimmick of you'd rub their little symbol there and the heat from your finger would... I don't know if it's going to show it there. But uh, it would either reveal if they had fire, or wood, or water powers. And it kind of worked like paper, rock, scissors. Uh, I think... I can sort of see a flame there, so I think this armadillo has firepower. You could buy the same character with any of the three different stickers on them. Anyway, so when I kind of got back into collecting toys as an adult, I really wished Battle Beasts would get revisited because G.I. Joe was back, Transformers were back, He-Man was back, and nobody was putting out anything for the Battle Beasts. And then when Takara put out these Beast Saga figures, it was just like a dream come true, and I was hoping this would last for years and years, and that they would... Uh, you know, recreate all the characters from before. But unfortunately, it fizzled out and there weren't that many figures released. But I especially loved these figures that were kind of nods to the Battle Beast line. So the fact that he's an armadillo and his armor is purple, I would not say that's a coincidence. I think they were definitely homaging this original figure. And just a, another fun little addition here. Every figure in the line had a variant so this here is a variant figure, and they are cast in translucent plastic. And here you can see I have him with his sword. Every figure came with a shield and a uh, sword weapon. And I couldn't show you this on the turtle because I didn't have any of the, the accessories handy. But I'll show you this little plunger action. So instead of the heat emblem, what b Saga did is he'd pull out this plunger, and they came with little dice that you would launch, put in their chest like so. They all had different, the dice had different logos and stuff on them. I don't know what they all meant. And you push the plunger in. And it would launch the dice. And that was some sort of game. I don't know how it worked because the instructions were all in Japanese. But uh, yeah, great figures. Lots of little detail. Love these guys. And the armadillo especially is just super cute. So yeah, he would definitely make my list again. In the number nine slot... I had Darth Maul from the Star Wars Black Series. So this was my first Black Series figure. So the Black Series were six inch 
figures. And it was really the first time the Star Wars figures had come out in a bigger scale other than the uh, kind of standard three and three quarter inch scale. And uh, I'd seen these in stores and I was tempted by it. Like Darth Maul is such a cool looking character. Definitely the best thing to come out of the prequels, I would say. And uh, it just looked great. The problem is, is I have so many of the three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures. I was kind of all in. I was so excited when the prequel movies came out. I was there at like the midnight events buying the toys and I bought up everything they put out. I have like a half dozen different Qui-Gon Jinns, even though he's all he's wearing the same outfit in every figure. And I've got a bunch of Senator figures, which are just old guys in robes and just tons and tons and tons of battle droids. And when those movies came out and they were as disappointing as they were, all of a sudden I was looking at this big pile of figures and I was like, oh, I thought these battle droids were going to be cool, but they suck. And so many toys and they're all in buckets now i don't display any of them because the sculpts were never all that strong they were kind of made i'd say more for kids good for playing in the sandbox but not really you know great display pieces i suppose so i was kind of over star wars for a long time and i'd kind of stopped buying the figures so when these came out i was like well this is really cool but do i really want to go down this slippery slope of if i buy darth maul then i'm going to want to buy you know some more stormtroopers and some aliens and Next thing you know, I'll be buying all those figures all over again. So I wasn't going to buy them. But then my brother bought me this for Christmas. And uh, I'm glad he did because this figure quickly became very hard to find and very expensive on the secondary market. And so you, you can see that he looks great. Like the sculpting and the paint on the face is really nice. They can get in there much more detail than they could on the smaller figures. Because I had a couple three and three quarter inch Darth Mauls and they didn't really live up to what I wanted out of those figures and I even bought the 12 inch kind of doll version of him and even then he looked kind of his face looked he looked bored it was kind of a crappy figure so yeah this one is really cool he's got that nice evil stare on him uh lots of uh, articulation he's got the two uh, lightsabers which can be uh, snapped together to create the one lightsaber here. somehow bear with me yeah, there you go. So now he's got his double-sided lightsaber, which is really cool. You can see he's got a bit of a combination of some soft goods there, as well as the plastic kind of tunic. And another really cool accessory he had that I don't have available to show you is you could pop this head off, and he had a, another head that had the hood up and a full cowl that came over top of him. So it's kind of like a whole piece of plastic that rests right over top of this. And it was really cool to have the two options. So yeah, it's a great figure. And it was so great, in fact, that it made me start buying Star Wars Black Series again. And now I probably have about 100 of these figures. Taking up more room in my man cave. But yeah, this is a great figure of a great character. And it would definitely still make my list today. And in the number 8 spot, I have Icer. And this was a Masters of the Universe Classics figure. And this was based on a character that appeared in the animated series. But he never had a figure in the vintage toy line. And uh, yeah, he's a pretty simple character. He's uh, an ice man, hence the name Icer. Um, I don't know why he needs a hood and wool on his boots. I don't know if he gets cold or whatever, but uh, he's just a very fun looking character. And uh, yeah, it's totally what I love about Masters of the Universe. These kind of just silly characters with the super obvious names. And uh, I didn't particularly remember the episode that he was in. I haven't watched the He-Man cartoons since I was a kid really so whenever they put out these characters from the episodes and some people get super excited because it's their favorite episode or whatever I don't really remember any specific characters but some of the toys they've been putting out have just been awesome and I really loved Icer he's got this kind of there's parts of him that are sculpted in like translucent plastic so he's kind of see-through uh, and then he's you know he's not just basic blue he's got some like white kind of speckled paint to give him a frosty look and yeah, I just think he's a lot of fun. Plus he had some cool accessories there. He's got this great staff with lots of detail on it. And then this kind of icicle weapon, sort of a spear. And yeah, he's just really cool. And uh, yeah, one of my favorite figures from the Masters of the Universe Classics line. So in the number seven spot, I've got a toy called Veer. But really this is supposed to be the Transformer Swerve. So... 
it was around this time, like 2012, 2013, uh, and it's still going on today, but there was a lot of these third-party Transformer figures being released. So what's a third-party Transformer? It's kind of, like, it's an unlicensed figure. It's kind of like a, a bootleg, but a very high-quality bootleg, I guess. I don't know how these companies get away with it without getting sued, but a lot of them do. So this figure was put out by a company called iGear, and he is supposed to be the Transformer named Swerve, but for legal reasons, I guess they try their best. They change the name, so I, I don't know if that helps um, Hasbro, you know, to not sue them, because it still seems pretty obvious that this is supposed to be Swerve. But yeah, the third-party characters always have unique names even though it's kind of in the same vein so veer swerve you know and uh yeah i was really into collecting transformers at this point in time but there were still so many characters that i liked that hasbro was not making i don't know why i don't know if they were more focused on the movie baseline which i had no interest in i really wanted these kind of g1 style characters and swerve here was not a character i didn't have the vintage toy when i was a kid and I wasn't all that attached to him, but I honestly, I can't remember now, but there was another figure by this company. I, just, I think the company that made this toy it was, uh, was called Make Toys or, or was it iGear? Anyway, there were so many of these third party producers, but yeah, maybe it was iGear that made this figure. And I think in order to get the other figure, I had to buy this one. So that might be why I ended up with it. Or it might also be because uh, Swerve was a character that, again, I had no attachment to as a kid, but he's a main character in the comic books put out by IDW. They focused on him a lot. And I'm now a huge Swerve fan. I love the character, but I don't know if that had really come into play yet when this figure came out. Maybe it was very early on. So maybe I was just starting to uh, become a Swerve fan, and maybe that's why I bought this figure. I can't really recall. But whether I bought it intentionally or I just kind of got it because it was part of a package, I ended up really liking it. And uh, yeah, it's cool because the original Swerve figure was only about yay big. So to get this one here, it's a much more substantial figure, a lot more detail. Uh, you see, it's got a nice face sculpt in there. And yeah, pretty cool. Now, would this figure make my list now? No. Uh, and the main reason is because I think a lot of people became Swerve fans based on the comic books. And for that reason, a lot of companies have made third-party versions of Swerve and Hasbro has even since made a couple versions of Swerve and while this one remains a good one there's other ones that have been a lot better like this guy is a little clunky like his like his arm is such a big component to his arm that it makes it hard for him to do many poses um, Swerve is supposed to be bright red and you can see this is very muted almost like a dull pink color so the colors aren't really right for Swerve so yeah, it's a decent figure, and at the time, I definitely thought it was the best version of Swerve you could get. But in the years since, there's a lot better versions that have become available. And uh, yeah, so still a nice figure, but uh, not necessarily my favorite version of the character. So next up is Big Boa. So this is a G.I. Joe figure. This is the Cobra uh, Trainer. And so Big Boa was a character from the Vintage line. I think he came out in 87. And yeah, he's a bit of a fan favorite. And this was the first year that the Collector's Club offered their figure subscription service. So if you've watched my other videos, you should be well versed in the subscription service. But basically you pay uh, an amount up front and they would send you figures in the mail uh, over the course of six months. You would get two figures each month. And uh, Big Boa was the real uh, kind of crown jewel of the first figure subscription service. There was a lot of nice figures in there, but I think when people saw that he was going to be included, uh, this is what really convinced a lot of people to sign up because this is a really like beloved character and it looks fantastic. And this is the only way you could get this figure in the modern era. It's not like a version of Snake Eyes where you're like, oh, I like this version of Snake Eyes, but I can buy dozens of other versions of Snake Eyes at Walmart or something. No, if you wanted Big Boa, the figure subscription service figure was the only way to go. And if you didn't sign up at the time because it was expensive, which it was, um, you're out of luck because this guy's just getting more and more expensive on the secondary market. I haven't looked in a while. I don't know what he goes what he goes for, 
but uh, I would guess probably a couple hundred bucks. And yeah, I can understand why. Because uh, not only is he the best figure from the figure subscription service, but uh, yeah, I think he's one of the better figures from the modern era line. He just like, he looks great. The colors really pop. He's got fun accessories with those, uh, the boxing gloves. And he also had alternate hands where you could take, because the gloves don't come off. Um, the whole hand comes off, but he's got replacement hands. He also came with a, a punching bag, which is really cool. And yeah, just a, a great figure. This guy would definitely still be on the list today. And he would probably be a little higher up than he is here now. But right now he's in the number six spot. Now the figure I have in the number five spot, I'm not even going to haul him down. because He's too difficult to handle. So he's way up here. So this is Metroplex. So he is a transformer that turns into a city. And this guy is big. I don't know if you can tell from there, but uh, compared to the G.I. Joes and next to the Sky Strikers, you can see that he is a big figure. Definitely the biggest transformer I have in my collection. Uh, kind of, I have a couple of big combiners over there as well. And I also have Trypticon, who is the Decepticon city. But uh, I've got the vintage Metroplex um, down here. And it's a little hard because I don't have them side by side. But this guy seemed big when I was a kid. And now he is teeny. He comes up to maybe the waist of this Metroplex. So yeah, this guy was uh, pretty expensive to buy. And he's very cool. You know, to get a transformer this size compared to the other ones I've been buying was just there was like a novelty factor. And he's kind of a signature piece. He definitely stands out in your collection. But other than the big factor, uh, I don't know if he'd make my list again. Because he's so big, he's hard to play with. He's hard to display. And he's not exactly a character that I have any particular fondness for. He wasn't really well developed in the comics or cartoons or anything. So even though it's a really cool piece to get such a large transformer, and at the time he was definitely the biggest one I had because none of those other ones I just showed you had been released yet. They all came out since. So that was part of the wow factor of him. But in the years since, uh, since I got a bunch of other big transformers and, uh, and whatnot, it's still a cool toy. But uh, I don't know if he'd make my best of list. So in my number four spot, I've got Bludgeon. So this is a crossover figure. He's a G.I. Joe and a Transformer. So Bludgeon here, he was originally a Transformers character. And he was a samurai skeleton. And in the vintage toy line, he was what they called a pretender. So there was like a little pretty unexciting robot that turned into a tank and then he came with a big plastic shell kind of a chubby looking samurai skeleton that you snap together over top of him and that was supposed to be his pretender shell so he could i don't know be disguised as a samurai skeleton so he would blend into a crowd i don't know but uh in the comic books he's not really portrayed as the little tank robot inside of a shell he's kind of just a robotic uh samurai skeleton and uh, i really like bludgeon and i they haven't, at the time, they hadn't made a good bludgeon figure in the Transformers line. So when is the San Diego exclusive, they made these kind of G.I. Joe crossover sets with Transformers. And they did it for uh, four separate years. So you might have seen it up there with Metroplex, but they did the uh, the Sky Striker. Oops. Get up here. So yeah, they did the Sky Striker up there painted like, uh, Starscream and in another video I recently showed you or yeah it was my 2012 list they had the uh, the shockwave hiss tank so those were all vehicles but this was the figure that came with one of the sets and I thought it was just super cool here so you can see he is a samurai and his helmet comes off and he's got this kind of cyber skull underneath and so it doesn't really look exactly like any version of bludgeon that had come before but it's a uh, just a very cool mashup using the G.I. Joe figure to create this Transformer character and it kind of makes sense with his pretender background as this is a much more believable um, body than the, the shell of the vintage toy. So I do have some gripes with him constantly falling over. 
this uh, big samurai tunic or whatever he wears is not the best for uh, displaying him. He kind of tends to fall over a lot. He's kind of heavy. Um, he tends to drop his accessories. He doesn't have a really strong grip on his sword there. But uh, I am impressed at how well the helmet stays in place on his head. And yeah, he's a, he's a really cool figure, especially in concept, if not entirely in execution. So yeah, I definitely think this figure would still be on my list. I don't know if he'd make it in my, to my top five. Um, but yeah, he's pretty cool. And in my number three spot, I've got Mantena from the Masters of the Universe Classics line. So this is the four-legged henchman of Hordak. And yeah, I love this figure. And if you've watched my other videos, this shouldn't be a surprise to you because uh, I recently did a list of the best Masters of the Universe classic figures, in my opinion. And this was my number one figure. So uh, yeah, what's not to like about him? Like he looks cool as hell. Like I love that face. Very kind of scary, kind of freaky. And you can actually snap his eyeballs out and put on uh, extended eyeballs to recreate his vintage action feature of having the bug out eyes. Um, he's got a very cool weapon there in his crossbow. Yeah, he's everything I would have wanted from this figure. So uh, like this was the vintage Mantana figure with the bug out eyes. And yeah, I loved this figure. Um, it just never, it just didn't do a very good job of showing off that he had four legs. You can see how they just kind of sculpted them together. And uh, yeah, there's definitely room for improvement. And they definitely did that here with this figure. I think it's fantastic. All the legs are articulated at the knees and the, and the ankles there. It's got a great amount of movement. Uh, and yeah, the sculpting and the paint job is just absolutely killer on this guy. Love it. And uh, yeah, he was very close to uh, being the number one spot on the list. And if I were to make the list again today, he would probably he would probably move up a spot to number two. Um, the guy that number one isn't going anywhere. But yeah, this guy is uh, he's definitely held up over the years. I think it's fantastic. So in the number two spot, I have another transformer. His name is Gears. Now this is the vintage Gears from the '80s. See, he's very simple, very cute. To transform him into a truck, all you have to do is tuck his arms in, flip his legs around like so, and that's all. That's it. So there he is. Now he's a truck. And I don't know why, but this was my favorite Autobot when I was a kid. So of the good guy Transformers, I loved this guy. But you can see how kind of small and unassuming this figure is. It's a uh, Kind of leaves a lot to be desired and it was kind of hard to make a guy like this you know fight it out with say starscream or something who was like four times his size so i really wanted a cool update of gears and fortunately a third party company hooked me up so this you can see here the uh the size difference so this was made by the same company that made the swerve so like i said i think it was i gear that made these and the sculpts are very much the same. They tweak them a little bit, but they share a lot of the same parts there. You can see pretty much their, uh, their legs, their arms. Just the, the construction is very similar. And the reason for that is because is in the vintage lines, uh, the vintage swerve was just a repaint of gears. So they were essentially twins back in the day. And uh, so yeah, they're twins here now. And it seems like every time a company makes gears, they make Swerve. Or if they make Swerve, they make a gears because why not? So the key differences though, is like you see the chest piece is different. And his is pretty accurate to the, uh, the vintage one. Um, and then the head is different. So the reason he's so high up on my list is because he was my favorite Transformer. I love that toy. And this guy is clearly bigger and better. Like, sure, I love this one just for the nostalgia factor. But this one is, he's big and bulky and tough. Uh, he is posable, bends at the knees, and you can put him in some dynamic poses. He transforms into a pretty cool truck. And uh, he looks like like uh, he did in the, uh, the comics and the cartoon. There was a lot of kind of weird... 
uh, disconnects from the toys to the cartoon sometimes. Like Bumblebee was the same. The Bumblebee toy had a face like this, even though he had a full uh, face in the cartoon with like a nose and a mouth. But he had a face like this. And Gears is kind of the same way. I really liked this face. I think it's pretty cool. But it wasn't accurate to how he appeared in different media. So it was very cool to finally get this accurate face. But what's even cooler is you can actually spin this around. Oh, I'll see if I can do it. So yeah, you can spin that around. And now he's got a face that's accurate to the toy. So if if you preferred the toy style face as opposed to the cartoon, you can display him that way. And I love both. So yeah, I just think this is a great figure. He suffers from the same problems that the uh, Swerve slash Veer suffered from. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned, by the way, this guy's name was Cogs instead of Gears. That's the name that the third party gave him. Um, so yeah, Cogs is great. His arms are a little, you know, there's a lot of this kind of kibble on the back that makes it hard for him to do certain poses with his arms. Um, the colors are maybe a little flat. Um, like you can see how dynamic this blue is and then his is, you know, kind of matte blue. Um, but even though I've gotten other versions, both third party and official Hasbro releases of Gears in the years since, I still think this is my favorite. The flipping face really helps as well. But yeah, I just like the big bulkiness of it. And yeah, this figure is great. And this was the figure when I got it, I thought would top my list. But then uh, for Christmas, my uh, girlfriend Vanessa bought me another pretty cool toy and that ended up being my toy of the year. So let's take a look at my number one spot. So this here is Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe Retaliation, a live action movie. So this figure is made by a Japanese company called Hot Toys. And they make very high-end 12-inch figures. So if you're familiar with Hot Toys, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, I probably won't be able to show you just how cool this figure is here with this video. I probably won't do it justice. But like the sheer amount of detail, like if you can hear in the sheath to his sword, like that all is textured. He's got the thread on it there. All these little metallic buckles and everything on his outfit. Um, so you see he's got a knife here. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so that... So that knife there I just pulled out of his sheath right there. It's hard for me, hard for me to get back in there with one hand. Um, he's got all these little pouches that open. Pouches on the side of his pants. Buckles and zippers. The detail of his weapons there, like the sword. You see it's got that metallic sheen. He's got his Arashikaji Ninja logo right on the blade. Just a ton of cool detail. He's super awesome. And then the head. So it's very accurate to the movie. But it's got kind of this uh, translucent mesh over the, the bottom half of his head. And then the kind of reflective material in the visor. Just very, very cool. Um, now the sword here again. I'm going to pop this out of here. So this is like a metallic, metallic black blade. And it's got the Arashi Kaji logo there as well. So yeah, this thing has like loads of articulation. It's very posable. Um, and the, just the sculpted detail is incredible on this thing. These things are, like I said, they're high end, so they're kind of expensive. Uh, they come with these display bases, which is really handy. Kind of uh, just rests his, his crotch in there. But yeah, how could this not be my number one toy? So I was very happy when I got this figure. Snake Eyes is a great character. And yeah, this is just super cool toy. Love it. So that was my top 13 action figures of 2013. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree? Disagree? Think somebody else should have been on this list? Think some of these figures definitely don't belong on the list? 
please let me know below. I'm always happy to talk about this stuff. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, yeah, continue to watch. So uh, stay tuned for another video next week. Thanks for watching.